Hi, I'm Kate Tebow. I'm the vertebrate ecologist on FSU. I'm going to talk to you today about the animal sampling component of the terrestrial observation system. I'm giving this talk on behalf of my animal ecology colleagues, Yuri Springer, the disease ecologist, and David Hookman, the insect ecologist. So this component includes data collection on the abundance, diversity, phenology and pathogens of our sentinel animal taxa. And these taxa include ticks and mosquitoes, breeding land birds, small mammals, and ground beetles. And these data are of particular significance um, to the grand challenges related to our drivers and their responses, namely biodiversity and ecosystem function and infectious diseases. But why do we care about these challenges in the context of animal ecology? Infectious diseases is, is easy to understand for most people, but why in the context of biodiversity and population dynamics? And why are these data important in and of themselves? It's not just for the amazing field experiences you guys get to have, like the first or the even the 150th time you catch an Ord's kangaroo rat, and your world is bathed in rainbows and happiness, as it is for me or when you're pinning and identifying stunningly beautiful ground beetles. There really is more, because we know that field work is not all rainbows and shiny beetles. There are a number of really important ecological questions that we hope that neon animal data will help the scientific community to answer. And so I'm just gonna highlight a few of them here. First, how will small mammal demography and tick infection rates change with climate and land use? And we know this is important because the population dynamics of small mammals, namely white-footed foot, mice, um, have been shown to both impact and be impacted by acorn production in oak forests in the northeastern U.S. And that these dynamics have significant impacts on the infection rates in ticks with the bacterium that causes Lyme disease. Second, ecologists are interested in which climatic and habitat factors best predict the species composition of ground beetle communities. And ground beetles can be really good indicators of ecosystem function and ecosystem health. And they provide a number of ecosystem services, including consumption of pest arthropods, as well as many weed species. Hopefully we'll be able to answer the question, does changing plant phenology impact the diversity and abundance of a number of our taxa, small mammals, birds, and insects included? And we expect this to happen because of a phenomenon that's been documented on a number of occasions, referred to as phenological mismatch. And this just refers to when the timing of important events are no longer synchronized in response to climate change. And the example depicted here includes um, a bird species whose onset of egg laying is triggered by environmental cues, namely day length. And this, of course, is not changing. But what you are seeing now is that sometimes hatching of the eggs occurs before the insect prey that they depend on um, have emerged. And this can have disastrous consequences for reproductive um, success, as well as then the population dynamics of these birds. So now I'm going to switch to what are the unique challenges to sampling animals relative to plants? One, of course, we can't actually observe all of the individuals and environment. We can't put a large quadrat down and count everything that is present. And so we often have to collect some ancillary data um, that we plug into models to account for this inability to detect all individuals. And the example here is used in the bird sampling, where we're collecting data on the distance between the observer and the bird. And what is depicted in the graph is as you move along the x-axis, that's the distance between the observer and the bird. And the detection probability is modeled. And it generally is assumed to decrease with increasing distance between the bird and the observer. In addition, animals move, as very nicely demonstrated by the lemmings here. And this results in populations that are dynamic in space and time. And likely responding to patchy resource opportunities. And this generally results in more frequent sampling being needed to capture these dynamics. Also, as we all know, animals bite. Fortunately, not very hard, the ones we're working with. And then 
Animals are active at inconvenient times, and this means that you will have to sample at inconvenient times. And then finally, they also tend to prefer dense and challenging habitats wherever they're available, unlike us. And so at the end of a field day, you will often feel like the swamp thing, but hopefully you will find it to be worthwhile because you will have contributed to this amazing data set. So the Neon Animal Ecology data set is unprecedented in spatial and temporal scale in the co-location of measurements of such a diversity of taxa, as well as the production of an invaluable archive that will be used in the future to address emerging ecological issues and to apply new technologies. And of course, this all depends on the measurements being standardized, consistent, and comparable, a large part of which is very much dependent on you, the technician, to provide these quality data to us. And since all of the staff scientists haven't worked in every NEON site in the past, you will face some new and unanticipated challenges while doing this work. And so I'm going to end by thanking you, the technicians, for not only your hard work and your dedication, but also hopefully for the constructive feedback that you can provide to us when facing these challenges to help us make NEON data the best that it can be. Thank you.